Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Here I am. I hope that you can hear me. It is Alicia Michelle and I'm excited for today because this is going to be our unpopular opinions edition <laughs> of your vision 2023. So I, I decided to do a little theme, you know, for our state of play today. I'm so excited that so many of you are already here watching. And so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to share my 10 unpopular opinions first, and y'all can feel free to beat me up, okay? Y'all can beat me up first because I'm going to christen this as a safe space, okay? I was going to christen this as a safe space, so I'm going to put myself on the chopping block first. And then after I do my 10, I want y'all to start sending me your unpopular opinions. So don't send me your unpopular opinions yet. I will christen this space, and I don't want us to miss any, you know, unpopular popular opinions, okay? I don't want us to miss any. And so again, you can beat me up first. You can beat me up first. And then, you know, we'll get into this. Okay, you know, I want to just kick off and just say thank you so much for watching. If you've never been to my channel before, welcome. This is your opportunity to like and subscribe. If you love the Eurovision Song Contest, I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm just going to say, I think you'll like my content and I think that you will be interested in following the channel because the beauty of things over here is we don't have to agree. Like we don't have to agree. That would be really boring if we agreed. Okay. So let's, let's go off. Let's, let's go off. So I'm going to kick off first with my first unpopular opinion. So go on and beat me up. Go on and beat me up and I will kick off with a comment from I am Steven, a pop unpopular opinion, Alicia might regret this. That would be unpopular because I have no regrets. <laughs> I have none. All right, so I'm kicking off and I'm starting off with fire. I'm choosing violence today. I'm <laughs> choosing violence today. <coughs> so my first unpopular opinion is Norway. Okay, y'all. I don't think that honestly can win Eurovision. I don't know if Honestly can win Eurovision. And I'm struggling with it because I really like the song. Ulrike's vocal is just so flawless. So flawless. Um, yeah, so flawless. And yeah, it's just tricky for me. It's tricky for me because I don't think that ultimately it'll win Eurovision. And the thing is, I know it's a front runner. I do think Norway has other options, but I do think it's a front runner. But I'm ner I, I just I just don't think it'll win. And I know that Norway wants to win. So that's the hard part. That's what I'm struggling with with this is I'm like I like it a lot. Obviously she's going to deliver it flawlessly. <laughs> like vocal perfection, okay? But I don't I just don't think it will win. So I don't know. Y'all aren't beating me up with that. Okay, this is a safe space. Okay, we're going to keep the safe, the safe space. Okay. I just, so Philip says, I agree, even though I love it so much. I just don't see this winning. I know. I know. Okay, and then Michael says, I don't think honestly would win ESC, but I think Ulrich deserves to go to Eurovision whether the song is good or not. I kind of feel you on that. Because Ulrik is just such a great performer. I would love for her to be on this international stage. You know what I mean? Like, that's where I'm occupying. I just feel like I want it on an international stage. Okay, now I'm going to go to K-pop 24-7. So here's something interesting. So here's my second parter. So this is just we're on only on my first unpopular opinion. And just remember, folks, I'm going to do my 10 unpopular opinions. I'm going to christen this space. And then the space is yours. And we will be talking about your unpopular opinions. And we're going to try to keep it safe, safe space. But honestly, so K-pop says Alessandra is much better. I don't know if I would say Alessandra is much better. But I think the challenge I'm having with Norway is I don't know if any of the songs at like Melody Grand Prix are going to win or could win Eurovision. I will say though, it's just da -da 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 -da. it's stuck in my head. <laughs> it is stuck in my head. Okay. 
you know, stuck in my head. But hold on. Andreas has a good point. She would probably get top 10. Here's the thing. I think that Norway has some solid top 10, possibly top five tracks. But I know that Norway wants the win. And that's that's challenging. Okay, so that was my first unpopular opinion. We're going to move on. We're going to move on because I cannot just live in this space. Okay, y'all? Okay. And someone said, okay, someone's going old. Who saw Conchita to win? Um, okay, here's the issue with that. That was 2014. We're now living in 2023 where pretty much the betting odds have been correct on the winner. Um, pretty much we've, we've been predicting who's going to win. We knew Ukraine was going to win. I knew, um, oh, ooh, I hit that better than I thought I was going to hit it because I was not prepared. The Netherlands, like we knew the Netherlands was the favorite to win and then they won it. Toy, same thing, the, the train. So, you know, I think that we can read um, we can read the tea leaves a little bit. And Wisteria says, I don't think Norway is winning with anything this year. And that's my hard truth. But we'll talk later. So we're going to move on to my second unpopular opinion. Because I don't, we, it's at six minutes already. And we've got, yeah, nine more to go. So number two, I'm, gonna, I'm honing in on Estonia with this one. Okay, Venom is not Estonia's best option for Eurovision 2023. And the reason why I say this is because I think Alika might be better. I think Alika could maybe run at top three. I don't, I don't know about winning. I don't know about winning, but right now it's too early. But, but I think Alika Bridges might be better. And I think t Bedwetters is like certified top five for me. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so go on and beat be, be me up. Beat me up. Hold on. Beat me up. I, I, just, I just think Venom is not the best option for Estonia. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's a bad song. I just don't know if that is the best one for Estonia, but I will say the way that Estee Lau typically goes, y'all, as much as I love Estee Lau, because they have so many songs that I like. They have so many songs that I like. They never pick the song that's like my favorite. And Loki this year, the song that I really like from Estee Lau is, Dud, I don't want, I don't miss you. I don't want to be with you. ML's. ML's, that's that's a song that I really, really like. But Bridges is good. Like, ML's is just a song that I'm like, oh, I just want to listen to this. Okay. So let me see. Let me hop in the comments, see, see how y'all are feeling. Okay. So Sandra says, Venom is very Three Days Grace. It's 15 years late. I mean, to me, it's the nickelback of it all. Okay. Giorgio says, agree. My favorite is Bedwetters. I love Venom, but I think Alika would do better. Okay. And if Estonia wants to win, this is the feedback they need. This isn't about being nice, y'all. This is about kindness. This is about kindness. We need to be mindful of that. Okay. Oh, wait. Marco says, Venom is your favorite. We're not saying it's bad. We're not, say we're, we're not saying it's bad. We're just saying we think that Estonia might have better options for them to cut through if it is a win that they are seeking on the Eurovision stage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Arjun says, Alika is better for me, but Ali is also good. But Bridges is more my style and both have top 10 potential. I'm telling you, I don't think Venom is top 10. <laughs> Y'all, I don't, I don't think Venom is top, is top 10. Not in a year that I feel like could be very strong. That's, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And fade away and radiate says you're gorgeous. Thank you because I'm giving you a full face of lotion. There's no makeup. This is, this is lotion. Okay. Um, okay. Andrea says, I love the studio version of Lighthouse, but the, but the love was messy. Okay. Now I'm confused. I feel a little, um, Christian says this year's SD Lau is probably my least favorite in a long time. I don't think that that's a crazy thing to say because SD Lau, I do think as a whole, I think they don't pick right, but I do think as a whole, sonically, it's pretty nice to listen to. Okay. Okay. Y'all, um, uh, Alio says, have you come around to Belgium song yet? Absolutely not. I'm bathing in national selection season. I'm not even really bathing in any of the songs we have selected, except for Ukraine's. Except for Ukraine's. I'm only listening to the U Ukrainian song on my playlist currently. I can share my playlist later. But okay, so so unpopular opinion number two, y'all y'all kind of agreed with me. Maybe that's just because this is the community that we built. This is just us. Maybe this is just us living in this space. Okay, number three. Okay, now y'all are going to beat me up on this one. I'm prepared. I'm prepared for it. I'm talking about Finland. I'm just going to say it. And I 
Say this after really listening to all the studio cuts last night in the car. I was at a three-hour drive, so I really bathed myself in this. UMK is not the best national selection this year. Okay, beat me up. Okay, flog me. Flog me. It's okay. The reason why I am saying that UMK is not the best national selection this year is because Portugal is. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, I like what UMK is giving us, okay? <laughs> okay. So so okay, I'm getting I'm getting some flogging. I'm getting some I'm getting some flogging. Someone said girl. So uh, okay, wait. Some people are saying true. Okay. Shay says I disagree. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, y'all. It's okay. Hold on, here we go. Ja says, what? Like all the songs in UMK could get top 10. Look, I am just saying that it's not the best because for me, Portugal is the best one this year. For me personally, I'm not necessarily saying this um, with a Eurovision lens. So let me let me give my little asterisks with this. I do think UMK has some nice options for Eurovision context. But if we are talking just my personal, you know, what my favorite. So that just transitions into my unpopular opinion number four. So for folks who are just joining now, I'm going through my 10 unpopular opinions so far, and then I will hand over the space to you. So if you're already dropping your unpopular opinions, please don't. I don't want to miss them. We want to like discuss them as a group. So you can just react to me and let me know if I'm if if I'm crazy because I'm willing to be crazy. Uh, so for me, my number four is Portugal is the best national selection this year. Let me live in my truth, y'all. Okay, let me live in my truth. All right. So let's see. Sharon says, "Hmm, have to disagree. Portugal has a few good songs I like, but overall, UMK has better options." But see, Sharon, you're thinking for a Eurovision application. I am putting my opinion with an asterisk. When I say that Finland is not the best national selection this year, I'm saying for me, for me personally. So that's my asterisk. So I, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Um, okay. Juarez says, I, I will listen to FDC song tonight, but I find it hard to, I, but I find it hard to believe that. And I say that as someone who speaks Portuguese, well, come on and get hopeful. Come on and get hopeful. Okay. And then um, Wisteria says, UMK is what every country should aspire to have regarding both variety, size, and promotion. I mean, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Um, definitely agree with that. Okay. Um, and then, and, um, oh, and then Jonathan says, I still think Ukraine had the best selection. Not for my personal playlist. Not like the tracks that I just want to sit and listen to. For me, Portugal has the stuff that I just want to sit and listen to regularly. So I gave that with an asterisk. So now we're on to five. We're halfway through. This is good. We're making good time so we can leave time for all of your un unpopular opinions. Okay, number five. Now, I've talked about this on Twitter. So this might be new for y'all. So sorry, y'all, but Malta's best option. So the unpopular opinion... Well, yeah, my unpopular opinion is that Aiden maybe wasn't Malta's best option. And the reason why I say this is because when I think of what, we've talked about this before, that I think with Eurovision, there's a level of expectancy that people have. Um, yeah, there's a level of, 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 of expectancy. And I think what Aiden was serving I think if San Remo did it, or not San Remo, bleh, if San Marino served it, you know, maybe, or maybe even Spain, I think people would consume it. But I think when people think Malta, we think about, be, about I think, these vocal moments, these vocal showcases, and Malta has some other people giving that. So that's why I say it is because I'm like, I think, a and I guess I say this in the sense of Aiden might still have had a hard time qualifying. And that's, that's the truth. So ESC, Roland Trimmy said, it was a bop though. I'm not saying it was a bop. It wasn't a bop. 
I'm not saying that it was bad. Um, also, this other piece, K-pop saying what I'm thinking. Malta will have a new song in March no matter who wins. I'm living in that world too. <laughs> I'm living in that world too. I am receiving these performances as like auditions to get a song. <laughs> um, Talia says, I'm 99% sure Malta will not qualify. Um, okay, let's see what else we have. Lorindy says, Aiden had a better song last year. There are better songs and performers this year. Okay, okay. Um, Nate says, Aiden was definitely better last year. Okay. Oh, and then I Am Steven says, I think a popular opinion is that Brooke was the best option. I don't know. I feel like I'm seeing the love for Brooke a little bit later. Like, I, I feel like I'm seeing it now. And, you know, Aiden's not even an option. Um, DLL says, Malta needs to get it together because, no, we have to pick one by default. I, I'm, yeah. Oh, hold on. And then we got another one. Eris says, let's be honest, Malta will struggle, for, struggle with only Televote. Exactly. So I guess I'm just saying, I think people were just putting their eggs all in Aiden because of last year. And I just feel like people had blinders on the other performers and vocals that we were hearing. Yes, I think Brooke is an option. Ryan is a singer. He, I think he won The Voice Malta and he can sing. He's going to get a new song. <laughs> He's going to get a new song. None of these songs are the songs. That's 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 where I'm living. <laughs> I'm living. None of these songs are the songs. Um, Yeah, so, so uh, that's where I am occupying. Y'all can beat me up. Y'all can beat me up. I, so my, my fifth unpopular opinion was that Aiden was like, I, I don't think that Aiden was the best option for Malta. For this year? I don't know. Um. And maybe it's really like the only option. So, so yeah, someone else says, uh, Christian says Malta is choosing an artist, not the song. That's what I think. Yeah, that's what I think. Marco says, watch Aiden go to San Marino. Honestly, he should. <laughs> like, honestly, he should. He's already got the dancers. He already spent the money. You might as well just do that. Okay. And so, um, Okay. Okay, let's um, let's move on to my unpopular opinion, number six. Oh, y'all are going to beat me up on this one because I already saw comments about it. And it's okay. Um, to me, and this is my unpopular opinion, but I'm going to live in my truth. I own it. And because this is the other thing too, y'all. You know, it can't be both. It can't be, oh, Alicia, you're... Um, you're not as blunt as you used to be, blah, blah, blah. But then when I tell you my opinion, it's just like, oh, you are so wrong. I'm like, do you want me to live in my truth? <laughs> do you want me to lie to you? Or, like, or do you want me to just say what I think is the most popular opinion? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just, 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 let's just, okay. <laughs> um, so Denmark, to me, Liga Air is the best one. I think for them to send if they want to make waves. I do like Riley's track, but this, this, um, I don't know. What is it? Aya. I don't know how to pronounce it. The Aya group, the, I was going to marry him. He went away. He went away. Yay, yay. I was going to marry him. Ah, ah. Look, I'm not saying it's bad, but if if we're talking about Denmark sort of just doing the safe thing, to me, this is still safe. It's still safe. To me, Liga Air, there's something about it that feels risky. It kind of reminds me, it's giving, because it it is so old and it is so quiet, it's like as risky as we probably going to get from them. <laughs> I mean... Lord, um, um, I am, okay, wait, hold on, so, oh yeah, I am Steven, I was gonna marry him, is so good, literally a jury winner, well, here's the problem, there is no jury, <laughs> there is no jury, <laughs> and Denmark isn't in the big five, he went away, he went away, yay, yay, Nate says, I don't like any of Denmark's song, okay, K-pop 24-7, Riley is a popular K-pop boy. He will have support from the European K-pop fans like Alexa in the U.S. Okay. 
I mean, Riley's song I like. I, I, I think I think Riley could go, and Riley might be able to actually qualify. But to me, if Denmark wants to give us a little bit of a risk or something like that, I would go with Liga Air, I think. Um, Georgie, yes, I love Soren's song so much. It's so sweet. That's how I feel about it. Um, Tabula says, I don't know, girl. Denmark's selection is so boring, except for freedom. But that would have to be staged well. And that's my hesitancy with freedom. If they just do a generic, like, oh my God. Can y'all hear this noise in the background? Oh my God. I'm at my mom's house this weekend, y'all. Bear with me. I don't I, I don't have good internet and they're doing work on the house. Can y'all hear this? Awful. Oh my God. Jesus. Back to the comments. Bastion, I love Liga Air. It reminds me a little bit of Denmark's 1957 entry. This is, I think, the point. So the point of this song is to kind of pay homage to their past entries. And that, for me, that's a little bit risky. I think this is as much of a risk as we're going to get with Denmark. So I'm going to live in my truth. I'm going to live in my truth. I think, so my unpopular opinion is Liga Air is the best song at Dance Melody Grand Prix. Okay. Um, next up, number seven. Now, I will just go on and say with this one, this is not really my personal opinion, but I have played some of my friends. So I played like two of my friends who are like music heads. So they like music heads, like they just listen to like a lot of music, international music, one of which lived in Germany for like six years. So they know what Eurovision is. Um, and then another friend who just really knows nothing about Eurovision, but knows that I'm really into it. And when I went through the songs, y'all, this isn't saying they, they're the best, but they actually felt like sonically, sonically, Ireland, we're talking about Ireland, Ireland actually has strong songs. And when I tell you that these people, so this is not really mine. That's the disclaimer with this one. Even though I do like Ireland songs, like if I'm just thinking of a playlist other than Hawaii, but that's an adult contemporary track. It's just not my cup of tea. It's I'm also not the demographic for the song. So, you know, but basically they thought that Ireland's songs, they like of the national selections, they thought were the best sonically just listening. They thought Ireland and Portugal sonically were like the best national selections. I did not play Hawaii for them. I just want to say that I did not play, play Hawaii for them because I don't want to give the streaming money um, for it. But, um, but yeah, so, um, let me, let me see what y'all think of that. Okay. So Shea says, as a, as an Irish person, I strongly dislike our selection once again. Well, it's going to be a long road for you <laughs> this Eurovision season, I guess, as far as Ireland's concerned. Um, Nate says, Ireland has pretty good songs, but none of them feel Eurovision to me. And, and I will say with this group of people I was talking to, this group of people, I mean, that could be real. Um, Stefan says, I like four of them. Wild is my favorite. Um, uh, you rope says Hawaii is going to win with that song. So ahead of everyone in the views because of the man and the locals are eating it up. Well, oh, please no Ireland <laughs> just with love. Please. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do not do that. I hate to be directive in this moment. I like to be more of an encouraging therapist that, that, you know, encourages you to make the right decisions. But in this moment, I have to be extremely directive. Please absolutely don't. Um, hello. So the comment is, um, wild is giving maps energy. Wild is, and, and that's why I'm getting nervous about it for a Eurovision application because I actually really like it, but I also really liked maps and I really want Ireland to qualify. Connolly, I'm just nervous because we have a young performer. I don't know how seasoned um, she is. I don't know if she'll be able to deliver it with the confidence that she would need to, but Connolly does give me like a little bit of that 90s like Cranberries vibe. And I think with the expectancy that people have of Ireland, perhaps they will want to receive that. And then the Wild Youth song, although not my favorite, I could see a world where it qualifies. I could see a world where it qualifies, to be fair, to be fair. But um, yeah. Okay, I'm moving on. Okay, 
I'm on, I've got three unpopular opinions next, and then I want to hear yours, okay? All right, so this one is general. So my unpopular opinion, and I, I'm doing this because I think that some people have it flipped. Like when I look at some of the comments when people are talking about things that will struggle to qualify, I think folks have it flipped. So what I am thinking is, I think that no juries in the semi will actually make it harder for the songs that are in English from non-English speaking countries. And I think some of those generic pop tracks, because let's just be real, the televoters, the televoters have been eaten up, ethnic, the televoters have been eaten up, you know, I think electronic, the televoters have been eaten up, you know, non-English songs. So it makes me go into some of these countries and some of the national selections with a little bit more of a switch in my brain of like, mm, like this really might be too generic. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, oh, <laughs> oh, Steven, Steven's back. <laughs> um, he was like walking in the woods earlier. <laughs> um, so Ali Oath, I am so happy there will be no juries in the semis. I'm for all, I'm, I'm all for ethnic and non-English songs. Exactly. Me too. Me too. Let's see. Okay. Um, Pasqualino, I mean, this is just a fact, to be honest. Generic pop songs won't get any televotes. Okay, so this is what's driving me insane, y'all. If y'all agree, and I know y'all are my people, I feel like when I hop into some of these comments, these people are like, oh, Alicia, get real. This song, and then it's like insert, like generic, just regular, like pop song. This song, people are going to be eating this up. I don't know. That must be the locals. It's not us. It's not the fandom. Those are the locals commenting because they don't really know how it's been going down. That's what it is. They're thinking about Eurovision, you know, 2004. They're still living in 04, 03, 02. That's what's happening, right? Right? Okay, but here, hold on. I see, wait, I see a comment though that I will, I, I will bump this up because this is true. Those misguided televoters ignored all of Portugal, France, and Iceland last year though. Portugal, I get it though, because I don't think, the, I, and I said this from jump, I just don't think the running order was really helping Portugal at all. And I think with televoters, they are more sensitive to the running order than we think. And then with France, I told y'all, I told y'all I didn't think that that was the track. And, and they never really cleaned it up in the way that they needed to clean it up for the staging, for the application of bringing it to Eurovision. So to be fair, and Iceland, y'all already know, I love that song. I don't think the running order was helping it a ton. But I am glad that the jury resurrected it um, and, and allowed it to be in the final. I, I'll just leave it there. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's, um, let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. To my ninth. We're going to truck along with this. Okay. Oh, this is my unpopular opinion. And I feel like every year I kind of say this, and I I know in years past I have particularly said this about the UK. And I mean, this is not really y'all, but I'll say this is really for the masses. Like, cause we, you know, we talk, we're, we're into this. This is not, this was not us. Um, yeah, this was not us. But I will say, I think that there are certain viewers of the Eurovision Song Contest who allow certain countries to do things that other countries can't. They'll give it, they'll pick up the phone and call for it. They will, you know, they will, they will hop on the internet and stand and thumb thug fighting people over these songs. And I'm talking about some of these generic X factor, color by numbers, we are the world. We're come and get together. We are one love. We're in this together. Like all of that foolishness. You allow, y'all allow Malta to do it. Some of y'all, and I mean, with y'all, I'm not talking to y'all. You know, this is, this is for everybody else. Um, what is that one? Yeah, nah, you guys. No, hey, you not. Nah, you guys. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think that certain countries get to get away with doing generic and color by numbers. And, and if the UK wanted to do it, if France wanted to do it, 
y'all will be like, how dare they? This is so lazy, blah, blah, blah. But y'all be gobbling it up from some of these other countries. What is up with that? <laughs> what is up with that? What is up with that? I don't like it. And I feel like the countries that have begun to suffer from that, it's not fair. <laughs> it's it's not fair. It's not fair, okay? Can we just, can we strive as a community to be ambassadors, to just make sure that this just, because it's, it's our job. We've got a thumb thug for good, Okay, can we just can we just all get out there and thumb thug for good and call out the people who are like wetting themselves over? Oh my gosh, it's so good. Uh, you know who did it last year that really irked me to the point where it was just like, can we uh, like we're living in a parallel universe? Malta, Malta last year, there were people really like this is gonna qualify. Now, to be fair, my mom really liked that song. She is the demographic for a track like that. But with your vision, the demographic is widening. It's widening. Um, okay, let's, let me hop into some of these comments. What do y'all think? So, Rich, I've got an unpopular opinion. I think all of these people who are constantly going on about wanting native language songs only do so because they want to appear to be intellectuals. Huh. Hmm. The only reason why I... I push back is because I feel like you might be talking about me, but I'm, but you know, I think my track record states, I think let the record show the songs that I typically like. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, because I think ultimately if they're going to pick up the phone now, it'd be one thing if you're like, oh, the people just say that they like native language. But then when you look at their top 10, it's just like pop song, pop song, you know, in English, 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 generic tracks, no, like no things. So that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. Um, Sharon S says generic can get, a get away with good production though. Mom. Oh my Lord. Could, could we talk in the room? Not the hallway. Um, generic can get away with good production. I don't agree, but I think that this is just because in America, you know, we just had so many years of the idol stuff and the songs that just really did nothing. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, Okay, do we have any, uh, do other people have thoughts? Ah. Oh, and Benny says, my mom loved Malta 20, 2022 and Sweden 2021. Same, my mom did too. <laughs> I guess that is the, we found the demographic for the generic uplifting tracks, not us. Um, uh, like Sam, are you going to react to the songs of Germany? Okay, so I actually already filmed my reaction to Germany. We can talk about it. But I've got, okay, so I've just got one unpopular opinion left. And, and I'm going to say it. And maybe this isn't for y'all. Maybe this is for other folks. So not you guys. Hey, no, you not you guys. Maybe, maybe that's the disclaimer I have to do. Um, I'm going to say that Ukraine's entry is really good. And I think it's better than last year's. And if Ukraine were to win Eurovision this year, I think that it's a song that's a worthy winner. It is extremely current. It sounds like what people are listening to today. And it's fresh. We know Ukraine knows how to stage. The styling was great. You know, it's, I, I think it's showcasing a level of diversity. Um, that is the space that I'm occupying, but I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people very lukewarm on the song. Um, okay, so Bruno says, nah. Um, oh, Stefan says the worst song pick so far, Belgium is literally living, breathing and existing. Sorry, sir. I can't, I can't, I, I don't live in that space. Um, Raphael says, I really don't like the chorus. Ugh, like, don't care what you say. Don't care how you feel. It's the, it's the only song that we have selected so far that has made it to a playlist. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so those are my unpopular opinions. All right, I'm hopping into the comments. Lay it on me. 
lay it on me. Uh, Beluga says, oh, well, hold on. Let me hop. I'm hopping in. Okay. So Beluga says, for a winner, I don't think so, but top 10 plausible. I'm just saying, if Ukraine were to win again this year, I would not be upset at all because for me, I think the song is very fresh. It's very current, but it's also very much so what I'm listening to right now. Um, and Tom says, personally, I'm not a fan of the song. It's not my kind of vibe at all. Well, what is your vibe? What is the, what is, how does Belgium song go again? How does it go again? It'll come to me, right? Maybe. Hmm. Okay. What is this? So Pogo is responding to our earlier unpopular opinion that was posed. You're not trying to seem like an intellectual if you think Poland, Portugal, or Hungary deserve to qualify over Belarus in 2019. A person of average intelligence would also not be a fan of like it. Yes, you know you like it. You know you like it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, uh, Olaf, and this is about Ukraine's entry. I think it needs a bridge, but it's really good. I'd be okay with a bridge. And let's just be, again, we're talking about Ukraine. Ukraine knows how to do Eurovision, y'all. <laughs> They're not bad to bet on. Okay. Um, okay. So let me, I'm hopping into the comments. All right. Okay. Shay is choosing violence today. I don't, th and saying, I don't think Benidorm Fest is that strong. Now I will say, I, stepped away from Benidorm Fest. And I think in my stepping away from Benidorm Fest, I have to admit, I forgot how strong Benidorm Fest was. I forgot. I hopped back into the playlist this week and I was like, oof, oof, yeah, it's still hitting. Portugal's still my, probably my favorite playlist just to go through. It's the least amount of skips for me. Um, but Benidorm Fest is still still delivering. Okay, ESC Roland says, on popular opinion, Belgium song isn't that bad as people make it out to be. And Malta has many good songs that people look over like Giada, I Depend on You. I agree. There were actually some good songs in Malta's national selection that I felt like, or the snippets of it, I was like, no, there could be something here. So I do agree with that. Belgium song, and I think people are harping on my reaction because I just said like, Belgium already has a spotty record with qualification. They do. This is a fact. <laughs> and to me, with just a televoting semi, I don't think that this is going, you know, I don't think that this is going to be a pack package that people are going to latch on to unless, and I think the only thing that will give them a fighting chance will be if they get a decent place in the running order. And that's a fighting chance. I am also saying this. With the caveat of, I think that this year is actually going to deliver some very strong songs. So Belgium has to go up against those. We can only have 10 advanced from the semi. If we are thinking that we are living in a world where Belgium's song right now is, is, 10, is top 10 worthy out of a semi, I am then fearful of the songs that we have coming down the pipeline. Okay. Um... Um, okay. So the Michelle says Belgium song. So to add the contrast, Michelle is saying Belgium song is bad. Even if people like it, it's still generic and weak. Cause I never said the song was bad. I don't think it's bad. <laughs> and I even said in my reaction, I will listen to it. Like, I know that I'm not skipping it in the playlist. I know that I will. However, I don't think it has any business being in the final. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Um, Alio says Alicia will come around to Belgium. There is no come around. There is no come around. I don't think that it should advance. I said again in my reaction, I will listen to it. That's not the problem. That's not the problem. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Pasqualino says about Benidorm Fest, there are some very good songs, but I don't see that many songs doing well. Maybe only two or three that could finish in the top 10. Okay. Okay. That is, that is a, cause I, I'm gonna tell y'all. Mi familia, mi familia, mi familia, mi familia, uh, mi familia, dun, dun, dun. Y'all. It's feeling like a winner. It's, it's giving me the vibes. I'm just saying, it's giving me the vibes. And are they, um, uh, um, da -da. 
the staging would have to be impactful. And the way that Spain did la the staging last year makes me feel hopeful that Agony's song could actually do well. And y'all already know how I feel about Alice Wonder. I think Alice Wonder sounds like a Eurovision winner to me, to me. Uh, mi familia, mi familia, mi familia. At the, ah. Okay. We're just knocking on things. Okay, I am Steven says, unpopular opinion. The addition of the rest of the world vote is good. You know what I think about this opinion? So I think it's a loud minority, a loud minority of folks. I actually don't think the majority of people think that this rest of the world vote is bad. I think it's a loud minority of folks who think that it is bad. Also, y'all are making it seem like it's going to be this large swath of votes. It's not. <laughs> It's not going to really probably make that much of a difference. I think the benefit of it is it makes people outside actually have a reason to tune into it, which in the long run will actually be good for these artists because Eurovision should be a vehicle for music throughout the world. And imagine giving these artists the opportunity to make it big, big and break in markets that they don't currently reside in. Okay. Okay. Um, and Georgie backing me up, right? It's just 12 points. It's just 12 points. Okay. I'm going on. Okay. We're keep, keep these unpopular opinions coming. World Sasuri says unpopular opinion. Supernova Latvian national final is a very good selection this year, especially comparing to last year's. Well, I know that this is an unpopular opinion because I actually agree with this opinion and people were chewing me out. Like I was drunk and I was not drunk. I was drinking. <laughs> There's a difference. I was drinking, not drunk. I actually think that Latvia has some stuff. I, they, they did what they needed to do in making me curious to see what the final products are. And that is what we need to do. That's, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Um, okay, ESC Roland says, Fusa can win, and I think for the theme of ESC 2023 is family with Albina and the whole, um, the situation in Ukraine, it could do good. Well, I'm glad that you agree with me. Um, yeah, okay, and then what do I have to see? Ah, uh, oh, someone is responding. Um, yes, I would love to see the woman on stage with Johnny. You're talking about in, um, I agree. Bring her out. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Um, and actually, Kay Payton is saying, I don't think Supernova is bad this year. There are two likely qualifiers, Inspo and Louise. I actually agree with that. I actually would say, I think that there's three qualifiers because they have that one electronic track that I really like. I think that one depends upon how they stage it, of course. But um, yeah, okay. And I'm seeing a lot of love for Latvia in the comments. Okay, let's see. All right, unpopular. Okay, we got a couple. Okay, we got a couple in the pipeline. Ricardo says, in popular opinion, we tend to think songs that resemble current Billboard Hot 100 sounds are the formula to win, but ESC is actually about the moment, the impact, the charisma, and not, and not predictable. I mean, I agree with that. And I think that that's why I'm like, when I look at Benidorm Fest, I'm like, Alice Wonder. Alice Wonder, y'all. Don't count it out. I'm just saying it could be really beautiful on the stage. So Ricardo, I'm actually with you on that. I'm with you on that. Because if it was just going to be like Billboard Hot 100, I mean, look at what happened in Norway. Waste, a great song. I would say robbed. But like, do I think it could have really done stuff at Eurovision? Top 15, but not the win that Norway we know wants to have. All right. Vesseline, unpopular opinion, given the participants of this year's Melody Festival, and I think Sweden could easily grab their seventh win. Possible. But I would actually say, I think the unpopular opinion would really be that Melody, given what UMK has given us, I'm going to throw Portugal in there personally, but I would even say Estee Lau. I think Estee Lau had a very nice um, selection, to be fair. I think they had something interesting. I think the unpopular opinion would really be, even with all these heavy hitters coming into Melody Festival and what they end up with in the end is still going to be, is going to be a package that maybe doesn't 
make waves at Eurovision. I think that Melody Festival and has a lot of expectancy this year, actually, with the lineup. I think the unpopular opinion would be that actually they might not make a dent that ultimately what ends up winning and gets picked. I mean, y'all realize they were they were gonna send the man with his apple tree last year. Like if the if the public of Sweden had their say, the man here I am. I, that's not how the song goes, but um, in my apple tree. Even though I will say he did win me over in the end because I was like, oh, this is sweet. This means a lot to him. I'd probably pick up the phone. If I was in Sweden, I'd probably pick up the phone and give him a call. One vote, I would give, you know, Cornelia five because I would want us to go to Eurovision and do some things. Okay. Um, Rebecca Ed says, seems like not liking cha-cha-cha is a popular opinion here. I do think it represents several popular genres in Finland and in a weird way shows Finnish music taste, but all scrambled up together. So I, I am a cha-cha fan. My fear with it though is, I guess I, I guess my unpopular opinion is I don't think that cha-cha could win Eurovision. Cause I just feel like the juries will bury it. Also the way that juries already treat Finland. You know what I'm saying? Like they already treat Finland with a little level of contempt and don't even give them points when they are deserving of said points. So I'm just, I'm just worried for that application. All right, Vlad, unpopular opinion. At this point, Romania should just, oh God, Vlad. Okay. Just flagging. I do not read these before I select them. Maybe I should. Um, so Vlad says unpopular opinion. At this point, Romania should just give up Eurovision. The interest rate is at zero here and it's really showing with the awful selections for the past two years. Oh, come on. Can we get hopeful? Can we get hopeful? Can we get hopeful? Mm, I don't know. Pasqualino, inspo from Supernova feels like such a winner. Their song last year was just as good, maybe even better, and so raw, but this year they need to win. I mean, I kind of agree. I like inspo a lot. The song is very good. And that song could do things at Eurovision, period. It could do things at Eurovision. Okay. Um, all right, keep these unpopular opinions coming. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, Aris, unpopular opinion, Sweden will finally send Jan Henrik, hopefully. You know, honestly, Aris, I might agree with you. Sweden needs to send Jan Henrik or anybody who can give us some Sammy from Sweden. They're overdue. Last time we got it was what, Roger Ponter, and that was so good. Mmm. I just, y'all, I love that song. I... Still listen to it. Hold on. I could like, <laughs> when spirits are calling my name, my name. <laughs> I, I love that song. <laughs> I own that. I love that song. Um, yeah. Okay. Judy, this is not an unpopular opinion, but I will read it. Okay, so basically, Judith is saying that Mimi, Pat, Mimi Cat from Portugal, from FDC, with a good performance in Liverpool can be top five in both the jury and televote. I, I don't think, to me, this is not an unpopular opinion. This is logic. And I'll tell you right now, I want her to go off with the staging. I want her to fully commit. It's giving me Fosse. I want faces. I want expressions. I want her to sell it. I, I want Fosse. I want Betty Boop. I want, I want theatrics. I, if they don't try to play it cool with the staging, go all out, <laughs> have that point of view and sell it. That song is everything y'all. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's everything. Um, Daniel says, cha-cha, Cha could pull a constractor. I'm not saying it can't pull a constractor. I'm saying I know Finland wants to win. Norway wants to win Eurovision. Estonia wants to win Eurovision. Spain wants to win. We know Sweden wants to win again. Finland wants to win. And so, like, so when we talk about those countries and the application of Eurovision, it's like we need to be having the real conversation about winning. 
we can't just be looking at the songs like, oh, yes, this will help you to qualify. Not when it comes to those countries, because we know they want to win. We need to put our kindness hats on and not our nice hats on and kind of go, okay, what do we think can really get y'all through? Because we know you want to win. And so cha-cha, pulling a contractor would be nice. But Finland wants to win. And Loki, I want to see it. Okay, not even Loki. <laughs> um, now, I will say this is a fear of mine. So Bruce says, so uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Karija? Ka Karija? No, that's not, that's not right. Karja? Karija? Karija? Maybe it's Karija. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm sorry. But the, the man who is performing cha-cha-cha, someone said, is he going to pull a Teflon boys and not deliver live? I hope not. I am nervous about the live performance because I will say UMK to me last year, very strong, very strong. And I just feel like, um, like a hurricane on a set of wall. Isn't that the song that came second place? And even best, I don't think was her best live. I, I will just say, as much as I liked the songs going into UMK and I was super hopeful last year, some of them just fell down on the delivery. So that makes me a little bit nervous that all of this promise and hope that I feel, I'm like, oh, but are they going to be able to make it happen live? The staging was good. The styling was all good. But the vocals were lacking and some of that charisma, I think, was lacking from some of the performers in UMK. So I'm worried. I'm worried. Um... So Raphael says, honestly, I can see a public vote win for cha-cha-cha. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's not the problem. That's not the hurdle. That's not the hurdle. Um, oh, Pogo says, yeah, but Romania used to be so good. I agree. But here, we can't really be saying that Romania is that bad because, I mean, they qualified last year and he had a hit in Spain. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Okay, oh, Oh my gosh, so I'm so behind on the comments. Y'all are really coming through. I just want to say, because I always say this, thank y'all for watching. I feel like it's just been a while since I've really been able to just show my gratitude and appreciation. Um, thank you. Every comment, every view, every like, like truly means the world. It keeps me going. Like honestly, if I was making videos and they were just getting 100 views, I would stop. <laughs> I would probably stop. I'd go, I am not contributing to the space. No one needs to hear from me. It's okay. I will find another hobby. Um, but this gives me life, especially because I get to expel and talk to y'all. So then I don't have to bother other people with Eurovision because the people in my circle, a lot of them are like, we don't care. We don't know and we don't care. And so this gives me life because I care <laughs> and I know y'all care so we can have these conversations. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Benny ESC says, unpopular opinion, Romanian selection is not that bad. I think I did. I, I haven't, I didn't do a reaction, but I did just in prep of this conversation. I think I liked like four songs out of there. So that's not that bad. That's not that bad. Um, yeah, that's, that's not that bad. Um, okay, I'm going to go. Ricardo says, unpopular opinion, an invited composer artist or popular artist with a big fan base won't win FDC for the first time and will probably get our first winner from the open submission process, Mimi Cat. Well, I wouldn't be mad at that. Even though, oh, but let's, let's pull this one because Raphael says, unpopular opinion, opinion uh, Bandieras is the best song in the Portugal selection. I like it. I like that song a lot. Portugal, y'all, can I just, can I just like go through? I, I mean, I mean, I guess y'all saw the video, so it's not, it's not crazy. But I'm gonna tell y'all the songs that are currently, and the thing is with Portugal, those songs are not like released yet, so I don't have any of Portugal songs here. But when I tell you there are so many songs, let me just, let me go through, and some of them I can't even, here we go, I can't even, recall because I've just been watching it like I've been watching the videos but let me just go through let me I, if I go to festival.consal's page and then I look at their uploads I'm just just so it is clear so you can see so um uh contraste mundo perfection um I'm liking um I well I'll try to hone in I'm liking the endless world neon soho song I like that uh obviously Mimi Cat, loving it. I love Evandro. Povo, ugh, love it. Um, I'm liking Ines. 
um, or Inez's song, Fiend Du Mundo. I, I like that one. Oh, and I'm loving uh, Ese Povo, Zapatos de Cimiento. <sighs> Sorry, y'all. Um, and then I love Edmundo, Inacio, a festa. Love that song. Um, I don't hate Nashi Maria. It's just not one of my favorites. I just like some other songs better. I like it, but I, I just like other songs better. And then I'm moving on to um, Barbara. I like, but I just, I don't know. I just, I don't think I want Portugal to send a song in English at this point. I think I'm just occupying that space right now take it with a grain of salt, doesn't really mean anything. I just think I, especially when there are so many gems here in Portuguese, so many just Portuguese gems, I'd rather latch onto that. And then yes, Bandua, Banderias, Banderias, I, completely wrong, but it was good. Okay, yes. Um. Okay, oh, Philip says, juries don't want Euro fans to go to cold Finland for Eurovision. Norway's cold. Sweden's cold too. <laughs> and we done been to Sweden in the middle of spring. Cold, not warm, can't wear no mini skirts, can't really pop out any cute outfits. Really, some of y'all need to stop playing and just go on and let Cyprus get somebody's win. Because I'm, I'm trying to have a, a bathing suit. A vodka beach party <laughs> in Cyprus. Okay. Um, Jordan says, on popular opinion, Dami Ng coming back to Eurovision as Australia's only hope at winning it once. Mm, honestly, well, I will say this is an unpopular opinion, but I do think it is factual. If, well, I, mm, no, I'm not going to say it because because y'all will misinterpret it. So I'm not even going to do it. Because I, I know Australia's sauce, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I know Australia's sauce to win Eurovision, and they just haven't, they haven't done it, not saying that they should, but, you know. Um, yeah, okay, ooh, ooh, okay, Olympic Song Contest. On popular opinion, Denmark should give it to the Greenlandic or Faroese broadcaster one year to see what they would do. I think they would take it seriously. I wouldn't hate that. Because that's like the Faroe Islands. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't hate that. Andreas, y'all can come flame Andreas. I strongly dislike cha-cha-cha. I will say this. I like the beginning of cha-cha-cha. I don't know if I like where it goes. And some people are comparing it to... Um, y'all know I'm still listening to that. Vasala. Vasala. And I like... Mama, mama, mama. I like that song. What do you think your mom was doing to make you? <laughs> um, yes, love it. Um, but I don't love like the the ba da 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 make a cha cha. I I don't know. It's just not my favorite um break. But I but I do like the song as a whole. Like I just think I would have taken a maybe a different turn. Like Puka was a little bit darker, and I kind of like the darkness of Puka, and I like the darkness of the beginning of cha-cha, but I get it. It's contrast. We need to have it. You know, sonic, sonic diversity. I get it. Okay. Thomas says, Alicia, unpopular opinion. I don't think Maria Celine Ofreya is as clear a Eurovision winner material as people say. See, to me, I'm holding on to that one because that's the one that I think could yield maybe the win. I don't know. Oh, hold on. Taylor, come here. Y'all want to see my baby? Do you want to see Jojo? Yeah, come on in. Here, I will give you a treat. Oh, wow. The comments are going off. Okay. Yeah, you want to say hi? Yes, and I think she might need to be changed. Oh, okay. Here. Yeah, you could just do it in the room. Okay, Jojo, you want to come up and talk to the people? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what are you going to say? So what, do you, are there songs that you like? I like Baby Tars. Oh, you like Baby Shark? Okay. Yes. Um, what was so what was your favorite? Um, what what's your favorite Eurovision song? What's what your, the, what that? Oh, what's Eurovision? Uh I don't know. Yeah, you know what you know what Eurovision I'm is. Just going to... Okay, all right. Well let's not choke out the people. Say bye bye. 
No, no, you're going to Taylor. Okay, bye bye. Have fun. Okay, have fun outside. Okay, bye bye. All right, y'all. Okay. <laughs> um, I will say, you know what? You know what's interesting? This just made me. This just made me think something. Have we ever had like a straight up kid song? We've had things that felt youthful at Eurovision, but have we had like a straight up like just this song is for the kids at Eurovision? Because honestly, as critical as I can be, and you know, I don't like joke entries and stuff like that, I would not hate. I I I would not hate a like straight up, oh, someone said teenage life. Oh, well, I guess, oh, yeah, that's right. He was sort of saying that was for the kid. But no, I'm talking about like just a song that feels like a nursery rhyme. I would actually be here for that. Um, Pogo says, that's how you write a song came as close to it as it. I agree with that because that felt like definitely for the kids. This is not for anybody over the age of 10. <laughs> 10. Um, but yeah, I think, I, I think, uh, I think, and, and oh, and someone said, uh, oh, yes, and Philip, you you see, because you're you're in the fold. Josephine's favorite songs last year were Subwoofer. But let me tell you, now when I try to put the song on, she will verbally go, no one it. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the aliens started to scare her. <laughs> she does still like Lights Off, though. Where are you now when I miss you? Um, and then someone said, is Jojo a full name? It is not. Her name is Josephine and she's named after my grandmother. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, we got a few. So I'm going to do like five more minutes of this. So we got to get these unpopular opinions in. So T, the one clearly just showed up, just joined the chat because that was actually my first, op first opinion. So Orik is not the right choice for Norway this year coming from a Norwegian guy. It's not that I don't think she's not the right choice. I just I just don't think it it can win Eurovision and again, we know that Norway wants to win. And I'm and I am here for a Norwegian win. Okay. Um Lorindi says Love is Forever was kid friendly and how to write a song. Love is Forever I would give that. I would give that. I would definitely give that. Yeah, you you brought something in there. You brought you brought some of this. Um, yeah, you brought something in there. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Here we go. Olaf says, "In popular opinion, I love Eleni Thorpe. It has to qualify, and is very underrated by the fandom." Number two, Agony is hella overrated, and Blanca Paloma should win. Ines is my winner of FDC. Well, I will tell you, I like Blanca's song. I actually like Blanca's song a lot. I would not be mad. Blanca for me is on my like cusp of like Benidorm Fest. For me, it's like Alice Wonder, Agony, and then Fusa. And then like my fourth, like it just isn't edging in is Blanca. But I'm more concerned about how Blanca will be on the stage, I guess. I think that's that's sort of where I'm going um, with that. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, okay, Gosboden, unpopular opinion, Mama SC is the better option for Croatia than Navera. I think I liked that one, but I like Navera too. I want to see it live. I need to see them live, but I think both have potential. Okay, I got Tom in the mix. Sort of unpopular, Ulrik with honestly could win Eurovision if she changes more parts into Norwegian. Ah, my mom listened to it and couldn't even tell that the Till LVD wasn't English. I don't hate that idea. And actually, you know what? Maybe what we do is we have the first verse in English. Or actually, I prefer the songs that envelop. So I would say I'd actually start it off in Norwegian. No, 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 no. No. We're going to start it off verse one, English. I never knew. Do the chorus the same. And then verse two, we have it in Norwegian. Maybe. I'd be here for that. Not a bad idea, Tom. I'm with you. I'm with you with that. I'm with you with that. Okay. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, Vault says Blanca Paloma would flop like Fulen. I don't know. Maybe. 
Maybe. I don't know. We'd be getting nervous. We'd be getting nervous. Okay, Ryan Smith, unpopular opinion, Me Familia and Alice Wonder songs are very overrated and wouldn't do as well as other songs in the grand final. Well, obviously, I disagree, but you know, you might be onto something, Ryan. You might be onto something. Benny, unpopular opinion. For me, the best national finers are number one, Estonia, two, Spain, three, Portugal, four, Norway, five, Latvia, Ireland, and Finland just after them. Ooh, Benny is choosing the smoke on this Friday evening for y'all. Choosing that. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, wait, I've got. I'm going to try to do two more. Michael, on popular opinion, Italy needs to give a woman a chance and Malta needs to give a man a chance. Well, honestly, I think my favorites, I'm sort of in the in the minority here with this. And I did tweet about this. If you are a real person on Twitter, you can request to follow me and I will accept if you are like yourself. But if you have like an alias, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to upset, except I just want Twitter to be dealing with like real folks and people that I know. Um, but here I had, I had this like with Malta and I thought that I wrote, okay, so here we go. So one of my favorites from Malta is the busker, the dance. I think that would be unexpected for Malta. And I think it could actually get some folks. It's fun. It's funky. Malta does invest in their staging. So we know if this track is good, we could have something. I do like Mikhail's track. And I think with staging, it could work. And then Christian's giving us something very traditional. And some people might say slightly dated, but I do think it's something that people come to Eurovision wanting to see. And I don't know if we'll have a lot of that sound this year with the Balkans, just basically not, not a whole bunch of them around. Um, and as much as Matt's song is, well, no, I'm, I'm not gonna, I don't know. I could be one over with Matt, but I, I feel bad even say <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Like, can I be one? I might be. I might be. I don't know. And then I think, um, I think that that, uh, that young guy, Nathan, he just needs like an older male performer to help him. And then with Italy, I don't know. We'll see. Italy, Italy has the formula good. So I, I kind of don't really want to give them any advice. I think, I think they kind of got it. I think they got it popping. Um, and then, uh, so Amadeus, do you already know when you'll release your opinions on the German selection? Well, we can close out with my opinions, but I do have a video coming. I recorded the video earlier, but I'm at my mom's. The internet here is awful. It'll probably take me four hours to upload it. And so I just don't even know if I have the patience to do that. But I can tell you with Germany, overall, I don't think it's DOA. I think that they have options and that's all that you want. All you want are options. Um, yeah. And so I will say the songs that I liked, kind of in order, kind of in order, because this is just off snippets. I haven't, I haven't, I didn't dive in yet. But uh, Lonely Spring, The Misfits, I like it. It's giving me like early green day. I'm here for it. Uh, next up, I'd say Frida Gold. It just feels really contemporary. We already see what the staging could be. I worry about Germany giving us a song like this. I worry about Germany giving us a song like this because I think it might just end up being forgettable for folks, but I don't think it's bad. Will Church, if they make sure the staging isn't super cheesy and kind of go with that like, you know, um, like heartfelt singer-songwriter vibe, I think it could be good, but that music video was giving me potentially like cheesy. So I don't know, but the song was good. Uh, then I like The Lord of the Lost. We had a visual there, something interesting. I was like, I could see people picking up the phone and calling for that. And that's what Germany needs. <laughs> they need some kind of love. I don't see juries really flocking to it, but I do actually, actually, maybe some juries, maybe some juries. Um, then next up, I have uh, Patty Gertie. I liked that. I thought that was interesting. Renee Miller, I just, I need to see a visual. I don't know. And then of the wild card um, from fall to spring. From fall to spring. So those are my opinions on Germany, if you if you if you want to know. Um, I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't awful. It wasn't the worst. <laughs> I mean, and honestly, at this point, Germany just need not be the worst. That that's good for them. Um, that's good for them. But thank y'all so much for watching and joining me. I am so excited for Eurovision 2023. I will probably have another stream 
like maybe in about two weeks, we'll come back together and talk again. And, and we'll actually have, I think, some more songs to digest at that point, too. So then we can really get into the nitty gritty. And instead of just kind of focusing on national sections, move up. And then also on one of our Super Saturdays, I am going to do the Super Saturday pre-show. So it'll be like breakfast for me. I will wake up, go get myself some breakfast, and then sit in my basement for four hours. <laughs> Just talking about, um, so so we'll do that. We, we will have a super Saturday. But um, thank y'all so much for watching. Um, and and Let's Dance is asking me a question I have already answered. I am not coming to Liverpool because Liverpool I don't have the funds. If someone wants to give me money to go, I will accept it and travel, but I don't have the funds. But um, thank y'all so much for watching. And yeah, I'll definitely see you in two weeks. And I will be posting my reaction to the German national selection very soon. And I will, I will probably do something for Romania. I'll do something for Romania, but we'll wait maybe a little while longer. All right. Have a good night, Europe. <laughs>